Hi there and welcome. My name is Chris Cam with Mining Journal and with me I have Emily Harris from the SRK team and we're talking about the future of exploration and specifically today we're going to talk to Emily about how the ESG practices fit into, into that overall landscape. Hi Emily. Hi Chris, thanks for having me. Our pleasure. My understanding is that uh, SRK as a group undertook a prospectivity project in terms of identifying targets at a global scale and then working down to a local level. For me, that sounds like a really technical kind of project, but my understanding is that the ESG function was intimately involved in that. Can you explain what, why that was and, and what the role was for you guys? Yeah, sure. So for that project, it was really important to the client and to us to integrate ESG into decision making because and ultimately, you want to be doing exploration in areas where you're going to be able to build a mine one day. And I think that the ESG information is going to drive a lot of that decision. So what we were trying to do was front load the project with ESG information so that the prospectivity modeling and the exploration decision making could really take that into account up front. So it's essentially red flagging anything that could become a red flag down the track. So you're informing your decisions up front. Yeah, exactly. I think it was helpful to the exploration team as well to see some of the information we were presenting because it was overlaying really nicely on their information as well. And it just helped us to communicate better as a group and to take those decisions in a collaborative way. It's funny because from, from our perspective, we look at the industry very broadly. We almost assume that the technical functions understand the ESG functions, understand the mining functions, so the exploration versus the mining functions, so because we look at it broadly. But it sounds like that's not something that's done naturally, that the technical teams don't naturally think about what the ESG concerns might be. I think every project is different, and I think every um, engineer and, and project team member is different. But what we find is that often we see projects where things are happening in parallel. A lot of clients know ESG is important. They know they have to think about it, but it might be done in a box or separately or next to some technical work. But what we were really trying to do is genuinely integrate information and collaborate across our own team. And to do that, we had to do a lot of learning and a lot of listening to each other so that we could make sure our information was really gelling together because seeing information side by side is only going to take you so far when you can start to integrate that information into the same model the same decision process flows that's when you really start to make some better choices and looking at it from a, a technical esg angle when you look at something and you have an opportunity to do a global scale project were there things that surprised you in, in what you found? You would have been expecting, I imagine, to see certain things in certain places, but being able to benchmark at a global level, what were the things that surprised you and what were the things that you kind of went, yeah, I kind of thought we'd get those red flags? Yeah, one of the biggest um, learnings we had is that it's about scale. So really, when you look at geological information, it tends to be at a bigger scale than ESG. ESG is very site specific. It's all about local context. It's all about understanding what is happening on the ground at that particular site um, and seeing the, the picture um, at that scale. And when we were asked to integrate information at a global scale, at a province scale, that's actually quite unusual. So we had to overcome a challenge of what kind of information could we bring in at that point? What information resources could we bring in? And I think the key for us, the success factor, was really focusing on spatial information because that spatial information allowed us to overlay on top of the geological information. And we could do that at a global scale. We could do that at a province scale and at a local scale. So for us, that was critical to, to find those spatial layers, find those constraints that would really help those decisions um, to progress through the different phases of the project. Okay, we're getting a little bit tight on time, but before I let you off the hook and let you run away, Emily, I wanted to ask you, just looking into the future with your ESG lens, kind of maybe five, ten years out, where do you see the exploration sector changing and hopefully making significant advances to address what I think everyone recognises as a bit of a discovery deficit out there? Mm. Well, from my point of view, I think what we're looking for is um, – real proactive use of ESG information, integrating that effectively, because ultimately, I believe that ESG information will influence in the future where exploration can happen. 
how that exploration can happen and actually how you're going to build the value from those projects. Um, we know that mining projects are succeeding where they can offer value, offer value to the communities, offer value um, and manage their risks really effectively and take those opportunities. So having those ideas and that thinking process happening at exploration, I think is going to lead to more effective exploration that will lead to successful development of projects. Emily, that is all we've got time for, but thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Chris.